It will add to open office. I'm tired of corporate domination of the computer industry. Free download, of course, as well as PowerPoint. Um, hmm? Yeah, I got all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I, I just have white in my background. That's just because I'm not free. Read my script, it will keep me for my 15 minutes. So I'll do that. Okay. The World Trade Center 7, also known as WTC 7, is the third building in the World Trade Center complex to suddenly and completely collapse on September 11, 2001. It was a 47 story steel frame high rise that stood 100 meters north of the North Tower. According to FEMA, its tenants list included the FBI, IRS, DOD, SEC, OEM, Secret Service, and various banks and insurance companies. Uh, needless to say, it was a very secure building. And as I mentioned a moment ago, it, it actually contained the records for uh, en the Enron investigation, which, uh, there they go. The building fell at about 5.20 on the afternoon of 9-11. Watching the building as it came down looks like it just sank into the ground. Its destruction closely resembled a standard controlled demolition, unlike the Twin Towers, which were destroyed from the top down in a mushrooming cloud of debris. The destruction of Building 7 has attracted a lot of interest because it was not hit by an airplane. It was hit by debris from the collapse of the North Tower, but other buildings in the vicinity, particular WTC 5 and 6, received much more devastating damage, but did not undergo a total collapse. NIST, the government agency tasked with investigating the building collapses, by the way, it was a building safety investigation, not a criminal investigation, discounts the impact damage and attributes the collapse to fire alone. Needless to say, that's a controversial finding on the face of it. Early on, a number of people measured the collapse rate of WTC-7 and claimed that it fell at close to the acceleration of gravity. If that were actually true, it would be a smoking gun for explosive demolition. So I did the measurement myself. <clears throat> I'm a high school physics teacher. One of the tools I use in my classroom is a free software program called Physics Toolkit. It allows you to put markers on each frame of a video to measure the positions of objects as functions of time. It also has a built-in graphical analysis capability, which allows you to determine velocities and accelerations, which is what's happening here. The slope of this would indicate the acceleration. And the fact that it's straight, by the way, indicates it's a uniform acceleration. <clears throat> what I found was an average acceleration close to 9 meters per second squared. The acceleration of gravity is g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. However, I noticed the acceleration was not uniform. When I focused on just the first few seconds, the acceleration was essentially G. I did a screencast of the measurement process and posted it on YouTube. <clears throat> the main limitation of this original measurement was the uncertainty in the calibration. Then in August 2008, NIST released its long-awaited <coughs> report on Building 7, <coughs> in which they claimed the building came down due to fire alone. It was labeled, Final report on the collapse of World Trade Center Building 7, draft for public comment. In that report, they published the exact heights of the 29th floor and the top of the parapet. I could identify those points in the video, so I used their numbers, their numbers to recalibrate my measurement. This time I got it even closer to G, 9.88 meters per second squared, which is within 1% of G. Contrast that with NIST's claim in the report that the roof line took 5.4 seconds to come down, 18 floors, which they described as 40% longer than free fall time. Uh, free fall time would have been 3.9 seconds. That's a very interesting measurement because 5.4 seconds is the exact time predicted 
by their computer model for the building to crumple down through the first 18 floors. It's very unusual for computer models of complex phenomena to yield predictions that are that precise. The way NIST talked about their collapse measurement was very strange. They didn't talk about the acceleration of the building compared to the acceleration of gravity. They talked about freefall time. Their measurement, their method was equivalent to using only two data points, like starting and stopping a stopwatch. Using only two data points glosses over the question of uniformity of the motion. It's like trying to argue your way out of a 70 mile an hour speeding ticket by telling the judge, my trip was 30 miles and it took me over an hour. <laughs> The NIST document takes a few more bizarre twists. On page 40 is a sentence that begins, assuming the descent speed was approximately constant. It's highlighted here. The descent speed was, of course, not constant. The statement is followed in the next paragraph by the equation t equals the square root of 2h over g, which applies only under conditions of uniform acceleration. It's clear that the constant speed reference is a misstatement. Given the equation they used, they clearly intended to say constant acceleration. Yet the constant acceleration reference is also wrong over the interval they chose. More on that later. On August 26th of last year, NIST staged a live technical briefing. I applied and got a password to submit a question by email. Here's a little of what happened. Our next question comes from David Chandler, the American Association of Physics Teachers. Uh, any number of competent measurements using a variety of methods indicate the northwest corner of WTC7 fell with an acceleration within a few percent of the acceleration of gravity. Yet your report contradicts this cl claiming 40% slower than freefall based on a single data point. Uh, how can such a publicly visible, easily measurable quantity be set aside? Can you repeat the question, please? Sure. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the analysis shows there's a difference in time between a free fall time. A free fall time would be an object that has no uh, structural components below it. Uh, and if you look at the analysis of the video, it shows that the time it takes for the 17 uh, for the, uh, the the roof line of the video to do, to uh, collapse down the 17 floors that you can actually see in the video below which you can't see anything in the video is about uh, 3.9 seconds. Uh, what the analysis shows and um, the structural analysis shows and the collapse analysis shows it that same time that it took for the structural model to come down from the roof line all the way for those 17 floors to disappear is um, 5.4 seconds. It's uh, about 1.5 uh, uh, seconds or roughly 40 percent more time for that free fall to happen. And that is not at all unusual because there, there was a structural resistance that was provided in this particular case. And you had, you had a sequence of structural failures that had to take place and where everything was not instantaneous. <clears throat> The problem with making bizarre and untrue claims about the rate of descent of the building is the truth is right out in the open for the world to see. All it takes is someone to come along with a physics background, a free software tool, and a video downloaded from the internet to expose the lie, and the lie it is. 